If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, December 3rd, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finise Monitor, we'll talk to Michael Flack, who is primed to be one of the best mid-distance collegiate swimmers in the country this season after a strong showing at the Virginia Tech Invite. And Michael joins us now from Columbia, South Carolina. Michael, good to see you. How are you today? Doing good, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. So, um, the Virginia Tech invite is where you swam really fast in the 200 free, 500 free, and actually 200 fly as well. Uh, were you fully shaved and tapered for that meet? Um, I wouldn't say fully. I mean, the way the season's set up this year and the selection process is, we knew we, we, could, uh, we could play around with it a little and kind of go into this meet differently than we have in the past. So we wanted to do enough to get me a qualification for the NC2As in March, and I think we did just that. So well, I, 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 set, us up, set us up really well. I would say so. 4.18.38 in the 500 free, which at the time was the fastest collegiate time in that event. Um, and not too far off your lifetime best, right? Your best is 4.16? Yeah, that's correct. So, I mean, if for not being fully tapered, you've got to be pretty happy to be so close to your lifetime best. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's been a while since I got to swim the, the 500 or even swim yards since uh, the red shirt last year. But... Uh, I think uh, it, was, it was a really good meet for me. Good to kind of shake off the cobwebs and get back into racing mode for college. Now, tell us about that race, uh, especially since you didn't have anybody to swim against. So you're basically racing the clock. Tell us what your focus was like and how you were able to maintain that pace knowing that you're out there alone. Um, it's definitely important important to set yourself up uh, that first 200 or so. And my main focus in the 500 is finishing strong. So. Uh, working those last walls and getting home and just yeah, finishing hard is usually what my focus is on. So I was happy that I got out fast enough to put myself in that position. And as I said, you also had a good swim in your 200 free. You were just a few tenths off your lifetime best. Uh, seems to be a major turnaround year for you. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. I think so. Um, that we've been playing with the speed a little bit more, um, getting the chance to swim on some sprint relays that I hadn't really had the chance to swim on in the past. And I think that's showing in my 200 free. It's giving me a little bit more speed uh, in the shorter distances, which I really like. I think it's good for me. Yeah, it was interesting to see your name on some of those uh, shorter relays. It was like Michael Flagg doesn't do anything under a 200. So is this something that you kind of want to play with as you, as you move along here, trying to get into those shorter distances? Um... It's At least for relay purposes. Yeah, for relay purposes, definitely. I'd love to help out the team on relays and to be a part of that and just putting myself uh, up on those relays to help the team as any chance I can get. So I think being able to focus in training on more sprints and it's helping my 200 free, but at the same time it's also uh, helping the team out with those relays. Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's a turnaround year for you. Tell us how... South Carolina is doing because it looks like there's there's a lot of great things happening there as well. Yeah, it's been a huge season for us so far. Um, just setting ourselves up for the second semester in the SEC championships. We've got a lot of great senior leadership on the team this year, and a huge uh, freshman class to come in and help uh, help add to that. So uh, we've definitely been having a really good season, and hopefully it continues over in, into the next semester. What did your head coach, McGee Moody, say to the team at the beginning of this season to kind of get you guys pumped up and ready to, to want to swim fast? Um, he knew as well as we did that this was a breakout season for South Carolina swimming. Everything was in place for us to have just a huge season across the board. And he, he's been there every step of the way, just keeping us focused, keeping us motivated. Uh, keep our eye on the the prize kind of towards the end of the season and uh, it's been just has been a blast this season so far as you mentioned you took that red shirt year last year to train for Olympic trials you finished eighth in the 200 fly a really big moment for you I'm sure so looking back were you happy with the fact that you you took that red shirt year 
Uh, definitely, yeah. No regrets uh, on the red shirt. I think it definitely paid off in, for the long run and just in the short run, being able to put that focus on the Olympic trials and having it turn out the way it did. I've, yeah, I have no regrets in what I, the choice I made. And I think it, it really helped my career overall. Tell us what it was like to walk out there in front of 13,000 people in the final of that 200 butterfly. Uh, it was just surreal. I mean, just took every every uh, ounce of concentration I had to to not lose myself in that moment and just kind of keep my focus on the pool and on the race because just to walk out uh, next to all those guys, those Olympians and all Americans and national team members, and to be Nip mentioned in that heat and then to swim in front of the huge crowd, like you said, 13,000 people. Uh, it was an amazing moment. Now you said obviously the red shirt year helped you in the short term and training for trials and you also said it would help you in the long run. Explain that a little bit. Uh, for the long run, I think that was more what we were looking at when we first decided on the red shirt. The long run uh, being 2016 in the, the Rio Olympics. Uh, we knew that it was a long shot for me to make the team this past year in 2012, but look Looking ahead, um, it, if we set myself up the right way, it could give me an extra year of college swimming and then just keep me in the pool longer and keep me, make the, that decision to go for 2016 that much easier when the time comes. So I see. So basically it reduced your post-grad years leading up into 2016. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, that definitely makes sense. So making the final in the 200 fly at the Olympic trials, you're swimming very fast in the 500, you even... Um, made the console final in that 2011 NCAAs. What would you say is your best event? Seems like they all could be. Yeah, it's it's kind of up in the air, I guess. Uh, I came into South Carolina kind of more of a middle distance freestyler, pretty much just the 500. I didn't even swim the 200 free my freshman year. Um, and then as I began to progress in the training and the, uh, the weightlifting and such with the program, we started to notice that my 500 free was getting a lot better. My 200 free was getting a lot better. My 200 fly was getting a lot better. So we started to focus more on those events. And then in the long course season, my 200 fly just kind of took off. Uh, don't know <laughs> really how to explain it, but it did. And so that, that was my focus this past summer. Uh, we really put everything into that 200 fly and just saw how far I could take it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess you could say I'm a butterfly with a pretty good middle distance freestyle or I'm a middle distance freestyle with a pretty good butterfly. I don't know. I don't know how you would put it. I think those are that's a good way to put it and it, it keeps your options open, especially, you know, maybe even your senior year in college or um, when you go into your post grad years, what events you could really start to focus on. Yeah. Uh, well it, it's no surprise you're a great middle distance swimmer. You you grew up swimming with the fish in the D C area where uh, Kate Ziegler came from as well. I mean Talk about training with her growing up and, and also how um, being on a team that had a big distance background is helping you now. Yeah, I think that's the, the training we had with the fish. That set me up really well for uh, what I'm doing now. I got a lot of good distance training when I was younger um, just to kind of set that, that base for what I'm doing now. Um, and being able to train next to Kate every day in high school it was just a huge eye-opener for me on what it takes to get to that next level and the dedication and the the just being there every day in practice and putting everything into it every day that's what you see from Kate Ziegler she was just she's one of the hardest workers you'll ever meet and so I, I really I was very fortunate to have her as a mentor and to learn from her the the importance of training hard and keeping focus that's great uh, what are you studying there in South Carolina business business yeah I, I it said in your bio, I think, that you chose South Carolina because of the business school, at least one of the reasons you chose it. So has the business school so far met your expectations? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great school. And what do you plan to do um, with that degree down the road? I'm not sure just yet, but uh, I think it, it leaves my options pretty open. So I think it's definitely something that I can work with in the future. Absolutely. Uh, well, before we go, uh, I noticed also that you have four sisters. Are they all older than you, or do you have some younger? I have two older and two younger. All right, so you're the middle child. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some advantages and disadvantages to that, I guess. Did they all yeah. swim? Um, in the summer, like just summer league, they all swam, but I was really the only one who took it year-round and really took it further than that. Well, it was probably a nice escape for you being in a house with four <laughs> girls. Yeah. What was it like growing up in a house with four girls? It's interesting, um, yeah, but definitely always trying to hang out with friends, doing something different. Didn't want to have to be stuck in with my sisters all the time, so I made a lot of friends growing up. <laughs> I'm sure, and probably all of them in the pool. I'm sure, they're, I'm sure your sisters are big supporters of what you're doing now. Oh, they are, yep. That's great to hear, Michael. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on your great mid-season swims, and we're looking forward to seeing how well you do the rest of the season. Thank you, Jeff. All right, see you down the road. Bye. Right. So that's Michael Flack joining us today for the Morning Swim Show. We're glad you joined us today as well. Be sure to visit us on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, or on Twitter for all the latest news. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.